Hey Most Amazing Top 10 family, I'm your host Chad Arena and welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. I don't know if you guys have been getting into it lately, but I absolutely love it. I'm talking about the new Doom. It's so good. There is something amazing about ripping demons in half with a blade on your arm and using a double barreled shotgun to split a succubus's head open like you threw a watermelon off a balcony. And because we love this game so much, us over here at Most Amazing Top 10 have been inspired to provide you with a top 10 list of top 10 scary demons from video games. This list is going to be brutal and amazing and I'm gonna give you guys a huge spoiler warning right now because there will be spoilers in this video for all of you at home who are looking to grab more most amazing top 10 content check us out on Instagram and Facebook we are starting to do Facebook exclusive content and you guys aren't gonna to want to miss any of that and you're gonna to want to stick around till the end of the video because I'm gonna be doing some more pet shout outs which you all love so much remember if you want me to shout out your pet you can hit me up on Instagram without taking any longer let's get into this list at number 10 we have the cyber demon why not kick off this list with one one of the biggest pieces of inspiration for it. The cyber demon looks like if the mother box that gave Cyborg his powers got stuck to the devil himself. This dude is a tower of demonic flesh with enough firepower to run through an army of tanks before dinner is ready. One of his arms is a straight up rocket launcher. You can't get any cooler than that. In the 2016 version of Doom, he has a back that is full of missiles that can shoot out and destroy you, jets installed into his side that can increase his mobility, and he can charge shot a laser blast out of his arm. He also has an energy sword on his other arm and he can summon spikes out of the ground to trap you and attack you super easily. Basically, I would have put this guy higher on the list if he was actually scarier, but the cyber demon is way more cool than he is scary. At number 9 we have Catherine. This is one of the hidden gems on the PS3. If you haven't played this game, then you should definitely give it a shot. I don't want to spoil too much for you, but we are going to get into it. But in this game you play Vincent, who has been dating the same girl for a little while whose name is Catherine, but with a K. He has a pretty boring job and he isn't a very interesting person. He encounters a girl who is also named Catherine but spells her name with a C. This girl is super sexual and works extremely hard to try and get Vincent to cheat on his girlfriend. Throughout the game you make choices that affect the outcome of the story and at night Vincent is plagued with terrible nightmares that turn into this cool puzzle game. Now here come the spoilers. Turns out Catherine with a C is a succubus and has been trying to seduce Vincent for her own gain. It's a very interesting game with a very good ending. At number 8 we have Lucius. I've never played these games, but they seem to have the dark and ridiculous gameplay that I can really get into. In Lucius, you play a character who is basically Damien from the movie The Omen. He is a six-year-old boy who is constantly being talked to by the devil. You go through hitman type puzzles, and you find items to frame and murder people, and basically ruin everyone's life. The game itself is kind of bad and pretty out there, but the idea of the devil being in a kid's head and telling him what to do has always freaked me out. Also, I wanted to put a couple more obscure games on this list. At number seven, we have Remor. Fran Brown is a very interesting horror game. The art style alone is enough to make you feel like someone is behind you and just watching you. It follows a young girl who is prescribed medication and once she starts taking it, things go crazy. She then is tasked with finding and saving her cat. While she's on these adventures, she will encounter Remor, who kind of looks like the rabbit monster thing from Donnie Darko, but has a cow's skull for a face and constantly has blood flowing out of it. This beast is terrifying and it serves as the main enemy in the game. When it appears, it frightens the hell out of Fran and uses its powers to humiliate and emotionally torture the people around her. Now there is speculation that this creature doesn't actually exist, that it's just a figment of Fran's imagination that is made up from her fears. So everything it does is actually just to make her more petrified. At number 6 we have Akuma, maybe one of the strongest people in the entire Street Fighter universe. I mean he seems to think so. Now is he a demon exactly? Well not like the others on this list, but he is super powered to a very high level, he is extremely evil, and his name is the Japanese word word for demon, so I think he makes the cut. His fighting style is called Satsutse no Hado, which lets him use dark energy. He is constantly looking for new ways to master his skills and become more powerful. His purpose is to become the strongest warrior ever. He will constantly test any opponent who think they can defeat him. He has killed his own master as well as he killed the master of Ken and Ryu whose name is Goken. Although no one has ever seen his full power because he is convinced that there isn't a person alive who is powerful enough to handle it. At number 5 we have the darkness. Now what would it be like to have the power of a demon on your back at all times? Well it turns out not as fun as you may think. In the game the darkness 
Jackie Escobar has a demon on him that juices him up with some pretty amazing powers, like the ability to chop off people's heads and heal from almost any wound. But at the same time, this thing is fueled by hatred, so it'll get Jackie in the mindset of constantly being enraged. It's like having a monster whisper in your ear all the time, telling you everything you need to hear so you would constantly want to kill people. You know when you get like a dog super hyper and then it goes crazy and pees on the carpet? That's Jackie, but with the power to kill everyone around him. At number four, we have the devil from Cuphead. Okay, this is by far one of my favorite games of all time. Can they please drop the DLC already? I'm tired of waiting for this. But the devil is the centerpiece of this game. He is the big daddy who tricks Cuphead and his brother into gambling away their souls. And once you get into this game, you learn that these aren't the only two who have been tricked by the devil into giving up their souls for a few bucks. Everyone throughout the Ink Isles has a debt to the devil and he is the worst guy in town. Not to mention his slimy sidekick Dicehead. When you get to the final boss battle with the devil, he shows all his powers. He has summoning abilities and he throws a barrage of minions at you. He can also shapeshift and change his head into a spider. Then he pulls you down into the underworld for the final battle. The character is super cool and has that 1940s cheesiness which I love. At number three we have Illidan Storm Rage. I know a bunch of World of Warcraft people are going to watch this incorrect because Illidan isn't technically a demon from where he starts from. He absorbed the skull of Gul'dan which gave him an insane amount of power. But it was demonic energy and he was messing around with demonic things and deep diving into the arcane and he works with demons. Also he is super cool and I thought he would be perfect for this list. And he has horns and wings which pretty much qualifies anyone for Team Demon. Also he was recruited by the demon Kil'jaeden to kill the Lich King. Which didn't work out but this dude and the demons are homies. They hang out all the time. But Illidan started out as a night elf and then betrayed his people in the War of the Ancients. For this he was given the name the Betrayer which makes a lot of sense. He was locked up for 10,000 years. I don't know why they wouldn't just kill this dude. He was released to help fight in the Chaos War and when he did this, this is when he fused with the Skull of Gul'dan and became an all powerful demon that everyone was afraid of. And number two we got Dante. Anyone who is a fan of fast paced Japanese action games will love Devil May Cry and Dante. This half human half demon hybrid is one of the most powerful dudes in the Capcom universe and he has a knack for hunting down and destroying demons and other creepy crawly things. He also has a twin brother who is corrupted by evil and the two of them have duked it out plenty of times. His mother was also killed maybe by a demon. He has a buddy who has a demonic arm that can grow super big and rip things apart. There are a ton of other wacky characters who get involved in this series. There have been in total 5 DMC games not including some of the expansions and remasters and additional content. And like most Capcom games the lore is so deep. It would probably take me like 5 lists just to get through a semi detailed breakdown of this character. So I'm just going to go into his powers and we'll call it a day. He has super strength, super speed, agility, accuracy. He's a master of a ton of weapons. He has a massive sword called the Rebellion along with a ton of other weapons and he's able to go into a super saiyan type mode called Devil Trigger. This is a very quick breakdown of Dante but the character is so deep and I only have so much time. And for the number one spot we have Diablo. I mean the guy's name is Diablo and it's a list of demons. You have to put him on the list having him at number one only makes sense. Diablo who is also known as Al Diablos is the king of hell and basically has made everything bad ever. He is the devil and has an insane level of power. He has seven siblings who work with him and try to take over the world and bring hatred to everything but he sits as the top dog on the throne. What he wants more than anything is to use his armies to take over heaven and earth so he can rule over everyone and be the supreme emperor. I looked into his wiki and it said one of his hobbies is torturing souls. That's how you know you are high up the demonic ladder. This guy tortures souls no longer as a full time job he just does it as a pastime. In terms of power Diablo can do it all. He can shape shift, control has an array of elemental and dark powers, can raise the dead, create minions, and that's just a short taste of how powerful this dude is. He is truly the number one demon. Alright everyone, that has been our list. Thank you all so much for tuning in. As always, I would love it if you could like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell. Alright everyone, that has been our list, and as promised, I'm going to be doing some more pet shoutouts. Remember, if you want me to shout out your pet, you can hit me up on Instagram. I pick new pets every day, so if you don't get picked one day, you can message back another day. If it takes me a little while to get back to you, I am very sorry. I have a a lot of these to do and without taking any longer let's shout out some pets. First off we have Pepe who is so cute. Look at those earmuffs. I bet he is very warm. Then we have Remy who looks so 
cute. He wants a treat. I can tell he's got that little beggar face. After that, we have Pumpkin, who is a sassy cat. I can tell by her look that she's very sassy. This is Davy. I love that hat. I can tell he's coming in like, do you like my hat? Is it nice? I don't know. And then to close it out, we have Maggie, who also has an amazing hat on. Oh my God, so many dogs, so many hats. Is This is a very good day. All right, everyone, that has been our list. As always, I would love it if you could like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell. Until next time, I have been your host, Jade Arena. Now I just got to play so many games. More Doom. More Doom. Doom all the time. Bye.